Okay, everybody, I'm Dr. Doug Adler. I'm Senior Associate Editor for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, and I'm joined by Associate Editor uh, for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, Seth Gross of NYU. And for this interview, we're going to be discussing Dr. Gross's paper, New Technologies Improve Adenoma Detection Rate, Adenoma Miss Rate, and Polyp Detection Rate, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. Welcome. Great to be here, Doug. So tell us a little bit about, uh, before we get into the meat of the project, uh, tell us about where your idea to do this study came from. So there's a strong emphasis on improving one's adenoma detection rate. And things that have been done in the past of improving bowel preparation, so we go to a split dose. There are uh, intra-procedure uh, metrics that we use, such as a withdrawal time. But as you've probably seen, there's a huge push of new technology that is thought to improve our adenoma detection rate. I sort of break them up into two key groups, optical enhancement, uh, where you're having wider fields of view, uh, and mechanical enhancement, where you're using the current 170 degree uh, forward view and colonoscope, using uh, caps, uh, integrated balloons, uh, to see if you can improve one's adenoma detection rate. And it's really not been looked at uh, from all the studies that have been published, I would say, over the last 10 years, which direction are we heading? Are we just going to keep doing what we're doing? Should we focus on optical enhancement uh, for the uh, primary gastroenterologists in the community? Should they be looking at a mechanical enhancement? And this is sort of uh, a, a meta-analysis to try to start to answer that question. And did you guys include chromoendoscopy in optical enhancement? So, so we did not. Uh, we did not in include chromoendoscopy or, or narrowband imaging. And uh, you know, every couple of years, there are, there are different outcomes for that. Uh, the things that we were focusing on are things that the uh, community gastroenterologist would have uh, readily at their fingertips. I think that things like chromo chromoendoscopy and even you know narrowband imaging, which has been around now for almost a decade, still hasn't really taken off. But some of these other concepts uh, have taken off to some degree. And which uh, which external devices did you include in the uh, analysis? Which sort of caps and there's a couple of different caps on the market. Right. So the the caps that we were talking about are caps that uh, have uh, finger projections, or caps that have uh, discs. We did not mm -hmm. do clear caps. There have been some meta analysis in the past about the the utility of using a, a clear cap. And actually, future studies that are going to be done are going to look at the clear cap versus some of these other ringed enhancements. Got it. The uh, optical enhancements that we looked at, there was a through-the-scope probe that would retroflex uh, when you're pulling out the instrument so you'd see the backside of folds. And then there was a, another 330-degree field of uh, view uh, that we looked at. So those are the, the, th the newer ones that we were looking at. So let's walk us through your study. How many papers did you guys ultimately look at, and how many did you decide to include in the end? So we, we looked at uh, you know 141 papers, and uh, we included 45. And uh, and those were those skewed more towards optical things or more towards device studies? So, so it was sort of a mix. And when we looked at optical, we are looking at. Uh, uh, devices that will Im improve your field of view to, so for instance, uh, the uh, probe that goes through the scope mm -hmm. or um, full spectrum endoscopy where it's a 330 degree field of view. That's the type of optical studies we were looking at. There aren't that many. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, most of those... And some of those uh, products have been removed from the market functionally now too. Right. One has morphed into something else. The other one's been removed from the, uh, from the market. And most of them, it's sort of just one study and then they're sort of finished, mm -hmm. uh, or, or two. And, and then the uh, other ones that we were looking at were the mechanical enhancement ones. And there have been a, uh, a, a bunch of those published in the last couple of years. And what were some of your key findings? So, uh, you know, the things that we looked at, and you have to, as you know, look at what their key endpoints were to try to pull it into the meta-analysis. So I was looking at adenoma miss rate, uh, polyp detection rate, adenoma detection rate. And really to s sum it up, uh, essentially, uh, the enhancements improved because every study you look at, for most of them, except for one or two, there was a benefit by using a uh, enhancement technology for colonoscopy. Of any kind. Of any kind. Optical, mechanical, Correct. cap based. Right. But then when you looked at uh, optical versus mechanical, it favors mechanical. Uh, across all the devices? Across all the devices. So when you look at the forest plots, you'll see that it just favors uh, mechanical enhancement. And didn't you guys look at sequel intubation rates with some of these mechanical devices too? Yeah, so sequel intubation rate... Because obviously some people have concerns because these make the tip of the scope much wider, in some cases 
significantly wider. Right, so, so with those mechanical devices, the things that one would have to get used to if we were to use it, is that there can be some resistance passing the scopes of the cecum, and also you feel some resistance when you're withdrawing. The biggest issue that comes up is not so much getting to the cecum, there is a you know pretty uh, met the quality metrics of getting to the cecum over you know 95% right. of the time, probably 100. TI intubation. It's TI intubation, which uh, is usually not an endpoint for any of these uh, studies, You know, strictly focusing on the colon. That's why for someone that you're concerned with inflammatory bowel disease, you probably would not you know, consider using that type of uh, enhancement. Right, might default there more to chromo endoscopy. Exactly. Um, so do you think to some extent there's an inherent bias in all of these studies? I mean, you can't use these CAP devices without knowing that they're there. You can't blind these studies, essentially. Do you think that people partially look harder when they know that there's a device on the tip of the scope? I think one probably partially looks harder when you know you're in a study. Mm -hmm. So there's that uh, bias right there. So depending on what arm you're assigned, right, what's the goal of the investigator? One might be to prove that you don't need an enhancement, and you may work even harder just with the uh, arm where you're doing colonoscopy with no optical or mechanical enhancement, mm -hmm. and to your point, the other way. So you would hope that it sort of, that sort of balances itself uh, out. And then the, another question I have, I don't know what your thoughts are, but how do all these devices compare to, say, a second look in the right colon and or a retroflex in the right colon, right? right. Which costs nothing. Right. It's just time. Right. So, so those things, uh, you know, these devices have not been compared, you know, to, to second look. Now, keep in mind, though, you could do a, a second look and not see any more than in your first look, but it depends on where the lesion is located. So I would say that you're right. There are times where we do second look uh, colonoscopy in, say, the right colon, and the polyp was still was right in front of you, and mm -hmm. you should have seen it on the first look. These devices are meant to improve the surface area inspection of the colon. So if you look at uh, CT colonography, they see about 99% of the surface of the colon. Mm -hmm. When we do optical colonoscopy, depending on the literature, we maybe see about 85%. I think that's a fair number. You know, maybe even a little less. So the whole idea of these me mechanical or optical enhancements is to try to improve that surface area inspection. But to your point, there are things right in front of us that we're just not picking up and we have to do a better job of polyp recognition, especially for some of those sessile serrated lesions that can be very subtle. So if John Doe were to come to NYU for a screening colonoscopy in 2018, would he be offered a uh, colonoscopy with a regular scope, or would there be a, some sort of cap device on it based on the data in your study? Right. So, so, the, so one of the things that I, that I always say before one moves to a mechanical or optical enhancement, you have to have the foundation metrics of colonoscopy perfected. So you have to make sure your patient does a split-dose bowel prep. You have to make sure that that individual has good inspection technique, has proper cecal uh, uh, insertion. Uh, so those are key. And then, potentially, the studies have shown that even expert colonoscopists with very high ADR can benefit from an enhancement. Mm -hmm. And I just finished another paper where we looked at, uh, did a forearm study, and uh, we compared uh, two mechanical devices, the 330-degree field of view versus standard colonoscopy, and uh, the arm that did the best was a mechanical enhancement with a cap with uh, fingers. But getting back to your question, uh, many of us at our institution have adopted uh, a mechanical enhancement to improve our, our colonoscopy. Any last thoughts for the audience before we wrap up? I think that uh, this is really just the beginning in terms of what we're doing in trying to improve colonoscopy. I think not only will the technology improve, where we're moving towards uh, something like artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very big thing uh, this year. Uh, and uh, I think our metrics for colonoscopy may change too. Where we're moving away from just adenoma detection rate, but we may look at adenomas per patient. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Thank All you, right. Dr. Gross. Thanks. Thanks for being here with us.